Hello, welcome to this Shoot Digital episode. Today I'm going to be using the camera that I'm using to record right now, which is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. And I'm going to be using this lens, uh, which is uh, 7 Artisans 50mm 0.95, that is for that camera. So I'm going to be using this, I'll be showing you the images, and by the end of the video I'm going to give you a review of it and compare it to some other alternatives for this lens and so you can judge by yourself if this is what you're looking for or not. So let's go! Bajo un poco la cabeza, un poquito la, la cabeza, el mentón. Ahí, voy. Bacán. Sin morir, pues está tímida aquí después, para quedar la caga. Oh, cuidado, viene la gente en bici. Eh. Eso, y mira para acá, ¿eh? Bacano. Segundito. Tres, dos, uno. Mira para acá un segundito. Bueno. Y sonriendo. Bueno. Más de cerca. Tres, dos, uno. Ese, ese verde está bonito. ¿Dónde fuiste para allá? Acá. Acá ese verde al fondo. Tres, dos, uno. Está bonito eso cuando llegaste para allá. Pero, ¿eh? Es bacán. Tres, dos, uno. O quizá el pelo echártelo para atrás. Eso. Tres, dos, uno. Tres, dos, uno. Tres, dos, uno. ¿Puedes colocar el cuerpo en tres cuartos en vez de directamente frente a mí? Un poco más al ladeado, un poco más al ladeado. Ahí, ahí, perfecto. Bacán. Tres, dos, uno. Hacia allá. Eso. 
Eso, a ver, relajada, 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 bacán. Okay, let's make a review of this uh, lens. First off, let's talk about the size of the lens. In order to show you the size, since I'm using the camera that I use to take the pictures, um, with the lens I'm going to be using the EOS M, the original one, which is a bit smaller than the one that I have there, but I mean, for the purposes of the size of the lens, it doesn't really make a big difference, but here it is. When I put the Seven Artisans lens on the EOS M, this is the size. Um, the EOS M is a quite pocket portable camera and it remains portable. It doesn't go overboard. I mean, it is a big lens anyway, but it's not a huge lens. It is, it is kind of big, but you can still carry it around and the lens is not super heavy, but you can tell it's made out of metal and it has a bunch of elements inside of it. So it gives a nice weight to it. Um, I'm pretty sure if you carry this around your neck the whole day, it might start, you know, you might start feeling it. Um, but I like the size, I think it works really well. I'm gonna compare this one to some other alternatives. The other alternative to this lens in particular is the TTR Sun lens and is the 0 0.95. It's also a 15 millimeter, uh, but this one that I have is for Leica mount. This is the size of the uh, lens with the USM. This is how it looks like. And this is how it looks like with the uh, TT Artisan's 50mm 0.95 with light amount and the adapter. The adapter adds this much, it's not a huge amount of um, you know, size that it adds, but in reality what happens is the lens becomes way way bigger and now it's very uncomfortable to use. I've had this lens for a while now, for uh, quite a bunch of months, and I've never, I mean, Except for the video that I used to show you this lens, I've never used it on an EOS M because it's just so uncomfortable. Just using it, it's it's awkward, it's big, and in order to focus, you need to focus like this and then take a picture and to manipulate like the aperture and I don't know, it's just too big. My 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 thumb has to be over here in order to grab it, and everything feels really awkward. On a Leica camera it's not that terrible because like as you put on like close to your face and you see through the viewfinder but in here there's no viewfinder like it's only the back screen so you need to be a little bit away from the camera and just being away from the camera and holding it and like focusing and all I don't know, I, I, I don't enjoy it, like it's just too big for me, so it doesn't really work. And the other alternative that there is, that it's not 0 0.95, it's just 1.4, just 1.4, is this one. Is the, the you already saw this lens, is the Viltrox um, 1.4, and this is how it looks like. This lens is lighter than the other two, um, it's made out of plastic. It looks a bit bigger than the other one. So in comparison, this is this is a difference. Um, it's not huge at all. And this one is much heavier than this one. Now there are two main differences with these lenses that I want to mention. I think they're important. With the uh, TT Artisan 50 0.95, that is for Leica mount. And for this one, these two <laughs> lenses, um, they, they are cropped. They're, they're, they're thought, like when you put them on your camera, they're not really a 50 millimeter. They behave more or less like an 85 in reality. So they're more like a portrait telephoto than just a regular 50 millimeter. Um, and on the other hand, this one behaves like a 50 millimeter because in reality it's a 33. The crop factor of 1.6 on the Canon EOS M comes into consideration. Uh, a 33 becomes a 50, and this one's uh, 50s become roughly an 85. 
I'm standing in the same spot where I'm recording the video. This is the 50mm 0.95 from 7 Artisans. This is the field of view that you have when you use this lens. This is the uh, out of focus that you get. I'm gonna be looking myself at the screen. Yeah, you can tell my eyes are on focus and all the rest is out of focus. That's the compression that you get. Uh, I'm gonna now move to the 50mm 0.95 with the Leica mount and an adapter. Hold on. Okay, so I needed to back up a little bit because the uh, 50mm 0.95 with the like amount, uh, it doesn't have such a uh, short focusing, so it, it, yeah, I need to be a little bit farther away. You know, because in Leica, the minimum focusing distance is like a meter. So yeah, there you go. I'm gonna see myself on the uh, screen up there. And same with the other lens, um, my eyes are focused, but the rest is out of focus. And this is the quality you can expect with the lens wide, wide, wide open. I am, not going, I am now going to move into the Viltrox and show you the field of view. So I'm gonna have to adjust the uh, shutter speed here, so you can, okay, there you go. That, that's compensating for the uh, light. That it, it, this, this is a 1.4, the Viltrox is a 33, 1.4, so it, it gets less light. But this is the field of view. As you can tell, you can, you can be more aware of the background. Uh, you can tell a little bit more of what's happening. Of course, this one has autofocus, so it's gonna, it's gonna be following me. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks like. And this is a really good lens. I, I, I already made a review with this lens. It's pretty cool, uh, but the field of view is different. So as you can tell, things are a little bit less compressed on the background. And yeah, in general, it, it works. For this camera, the autofocus is a gem. So that's pretty cool. That's the difference between the three of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch back to the other lens. So I'm not so close to you, hold on. The Seven Artisans one, it's, it's very good and when compared to the Viltrox, if you put it at 1.4, um, they're both like as sharp, like both are basically as sharp. This lens really, like after, you know I'm not a sucker for sharpness and <laughs> edge to edge, I don't know, like how good it looks, and it's not very technical, I'm never into really technical things, but you need to be aware that this lens has ghosting. Well, when you shoot it at 0 0.95, it becomes really dreamy. You remember the Canon, uh, old Canon rangefinder lens, 0 0.95, that's called the dream lens? Well, this one has that issue too. Um, it, the, the focus is kind of soft. Uh, it's, it's soft at 0 0.95. Now in the video, most of the images were taken at 0 0.95. So if you like the, the images, that's how it is. It's not terribly soft. It's not like unusable at all. But if you're really concerned about sharpness, I think you better shoot it at 1.4 or f2 and then it will be great. I'm sorry if I'm sweating too much, but I just can't turn the AC on because the whole video will be just invaded by this sound. Uh, so I'm gonna be sweating a lot. I hope you don't mind. Now the big question is why would you want to shoot a 0 0.95 at f2 or f1.4? Why not buy a 1.4? Well, that's a fair question. You can go and buy a 1.4. It might be cheaper um, Maybe but the thing that <clears throat> I think matters in this case is that you have the option Like if there's no light if you really need the extra stuff of light or if you really want to just blow out the background and have some uh, blurry bokeh and like take some pictures of leaves like I did on the video and you see like the the whole leaves like completely out of focus then 0 0.95 is the way to go um, I think that's that's where this lens shines really I think it's a great portrait lens uh, if you don't mind having a completely manual lens uh, you probably like this one there are many things that I do like about this lens and I think are worth mentioning. The first one is that it has no stops. On video, usually the problem that you have is that when you go from one stop to the other, it goes like this, like on stops. Uh, and when that happens, the video, the image looks like chopped, right? So it's like a little bit brighter, tack, less bright, tack, less bright, tack, less bright. Okay, perfect exposure. Um, but in here, you can just softly move from one to the other. Uh, it's very comfortable, there's no stops, it just glides perfectly from one to the other. I think that's very good for video. Uh, if you don't need manual focusing, if you're fine just focusing uh, by hand, I think this is a great video lens. I mean, in general, this is a lens that is really, really nice. I don't know if I would use this lens all the time on my EOS M, 
me in particular, but the reason is my particular version of the EOS M, the EOS M6 Mark II, has an excellent autofocus. It's, it's an amazing autofocus. So I bought this camera in particular for the autofocus. But if I only had the EOS M, like the original, or other versions, the M2, the M3, M4, or even M5, uh, those ones don't have such a good autofocus. On this camera, I was always focusing manually. So if you have an EOS M uh, from an older model, that is not the EOS M6 Mark II, if you have one of those models and you're looking for a lens that is a portrait lens, kind of a short telephoto, and will give you a lot of light to shoot, this is probably the lens you're looking for. Um, that way you don't have to push the ISO up to a ridiculous limit. You can have more light, it works well, it's not super big, it's actually kind of compact, it's easy to carry around. It's not hard to use uh, in terms of handling. It's comfortable to use. What else can I tell you, man? I, I, I think it's good. If you are in looking for a manual lens that has a lot of light, I think this is a good choice. I'm very happy with what uh, TT Artisans and 7 Artisans are just throwing on the market. I think they're just creating really interesting lenses and they're not extremely expensive and for the price they do a really good job so yeah i don't know well done guys <laughs> this copy was sent to me by the guys at seven artisans they offered me to give it a try and I, as, as always i said i'm gonna give it a try if i don't like it i need to be able to say that i don't like it and so far it's a good lens i like it it won't be on my my camera the whole time at all but it's good to have it as a backup on my case um, if I only had this camera, then for sure this will be on my camera most of the time. And don't forget that I have scenes for sale. They're on my online store and you can just click, I'm gonna leave a link in the description, you can just click it and purchase one of my scenes and support the channel and whatnot. If you want to become a patron, that would be great too. I'm gonna leave a link down there so you can become a patron uh, and you can support the channel in different ways and get something in return. Um, yeah, if you're into reading, I'm, uh, I'm gonna reactivate the book club on my Patreon and we're gonna be reading some texts and we're gonna be commenting them and it's gonna be super fun. I hope you are up for that and I hope to see you super soon. I have a very special episode coming up next. I'm actually, I'm actually unironically and genuinely excited about that episode. So um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one and until then, just keep shooting guys. Mm -hmm.